Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Janome America. And today we're doing another segment in our Easy Does It Quilting. So welcome. There we go. Nice to see all of you today. So we've been doing uh, other segments. This is our third segment. And today I wanted to show you some uh, tips of working with uh, purchase designs. So we did work with purchase designs before, but I didn't cover some of the resizing and some of the joining of designs if you want to uh, do it continuously across and you, you don't want to have to hoop so many little parts, things like that. So we're going to cover a bit of that. And I also wanted to show you, I have finished the quilt we were doing last time. I have it all quilted up. So I want to give you a look at that and show you how I'm doing the binding on there. And I will come back and do a segment on doing the binding. So it's a really interesting technique. So let me go to the camera so you can see that. Here's my quilt all done. And you can see the, it really quilted up beautifully. And then on the back side, look at that beautiful stitching. Really looks nice. Almost like I did it on a long arm. So that was really nice. It takes a little bit of work. You know, you're hooping over and over, but I love how it came out. I'm very, very happy with it. So for my binding, what I'm going to do is I'm using this plaid fabric cut on the bias, and then I'm adding the little uh, skinny flange. This might be a little bit thick right now. I have to play with it a little bit more, but I just wanted to pin it on here to show you um, that I'll be doing this as my binding going forward. I did curve my corners, so I really want a bias when I do, and plus when I'm using a plaid. Um, I like the, the way it goes when you cut it on the bias and it'll go around my corner very nicely. So I will do a segment on finishing. So you can see one of these techniques on doing a binding just like that. Some of you may already know that, how to do this, but I will show it to you. So you'll be able to see that at another time. All right, so let's go back here and I'm going to, I'll put on the software, but just to let you know, when you're working with purchase designs, you don't have to use software to enlarge them. You can use your machine um, the, or other, other editing software, but those usually do not increase the stitch count. So you're stuck with, if it just stretches the design out a little bit, maybe the stitch length is a little longer. So that's something to think about. Um, with software, you have the ability to increase the size and it increases those stitches for you. So it keeps the integrity of the design. I'm not saying every design can be taken from two inches to you know a 10 inch block. You have to take a look at that. That might not work. Just with anything that you increase, you just have to remember that part of it. All right, and then what the software um, also gives you is an ability to join the pieces without having those little uh, locking stitches at the end and then at the start so that you have smoother uh, transitions and you can actually join some together. So that's what we're gonna look at today, how to do that. So let me go to my software. I am using the Artistic Digitizer software and this can be done in both the full and the junior version. So let me get things situated here. The first thing I wanna show you is resizing and I'm gonna bring in my design that I used uh, last time. And I had it up here in the corner and I used it pretty much at that size. I might've made it a little bit bigger, I don't know. But one of the things to remember is the start and stop of, of, my, of your design should always be on the same plane. So always look for that. Most edge to edge designs will end up that way. And we'll be creating some as we go along at another segment. So you'll be able to see how that works. I can go ahead and resize this using my um, size box right here. I have proportional check, so it'll increase uh, proportionately. And if I want it as big as this block, um, as my hoop, I can put in, let me put the right number here, 10.5. And then I'll have to adjust it in here. Hang on one second, 10.5. There we go. And then I will adjust it into my hoop so it does not come out. There we go. There, so now it's the full size of my hoop and would take a lot less um, hoopings. Now that's something to think about when you go to figure out your hoop, your, your quilt. If you have a quilt that's 45 inches wide and you're using a five by five design, um, you know, five into 45 is nine. 
across. And then if it's 60 down, 5 into 60 is, what is that? I think it's 12 something yes and so you're gonna 12 times your nine so that's gonna be how many times you're hooping which isn't bad i hooped a lot with mine even though i enlarged it but once you get the, the knack of it and you get moving it moves along quickly so you just kind of get in this roll and it just happens but if you make it larger there's going to be less hoopings based on your quilt you have to decide what will look best on your quilt this a um, large design might not look great you might need the smaller design okay so and you can see let's i'll undo this down to the regular size. It was 1,700 stitches. Well, actually the smallest size was uh, 1,200 stitches. And then when I did it at the um, the big 10 and a half, it's 2,400 stitches. So it did increase stitches for me. My other option would be if it was this small, let's go back, and I wanted to do it across my hoop and I had room, I could multiply this here I could copy and paste it or duplicate. Hang on one second. There we go, copy, paste. I didn't know if I had touched that, there we go. And I could bring this over here and I could join them together like this if I wanted to. Now what I wanna look at is when I have the one on the left selected, I'm going to come up here to auto because I want to look at the stitches. Now, both junior and full have edit stitches. Junior does not have edit nodes. You could do very much the similar thing with edit nodes. So here I can see my stitches. I'm going to move in close so I can see them. And you can see they're coming in here on this side and they have some stitches that seem to be going back that way. That is the locking part of this design. Same thing will happen over here. It's going, to it's going to start and come back this way and then go on completely. So if I want to join these together, if I want to combine them, let me just move this one a little bit closer. If I select both like that and I right click and I don't see combine here, sometimes you will, uh, what you'll want to do is convert it to curves first because that will give it the option of uh, combining. So if I did convert to curves, so now this one, convert to curves, and let's take this one, convert to curves. There we go. Now I can take both of these and let's double check that our stitches are going in the right direction. They are. I'm going to select both of these. And let me go back there because I have the edit stitches back on. There we go. And then I see combine. I can combine them. And it brings them together. Let's look at our edit stitches again. And we have a little bit of this stuff in the middle. Our stitches are still coming in and going back out. But we have some stitches here that are going in different directions. These are the locking stitches that are still in there. So you can delete them and take them out of there. So if you wanted to delete these, you can. That way you don't have that bump. That's the whole part of putting your designs together is so you don't have that extra bump. I think there's a stitch in here too, yeah. There we go, get it going in the right direction. There we are. So now it will stitch completely across. Don't worry about that. We're gonna go over here to slow redraw. And yes, I know I edited them, so we're, we're okay with that. Let me go back out so we can see. I'm gonna go a little bit fast till we get to the part where it joins. And you'll see, it's just gonna go smoothly to the next one. Uh, once it finishes, let's move ahead just a little bit. There we go. And it's gonna come up here. It'll come up, swing in here, and then it's gonna go completely right into the other one. It's not going to do any back and forth stitching. There it is, it just went right in. Now there's a little uh, bend right there. If you wanna fix that, you can definitely go in and fix it. So now I have a nice continuous design that's now much bigger. It is 10 inches wide uh, by the five. So I can get across my quilt a little quicker. So that's something to think about. You might wanna do it like that. I like having, I like removing that from there so I don't have 
uh, to worry about that. You can also take out the uh, locking stitches at the other end down here and the ones that are at the here so that when you um, start and stop, you can just pull your bobbin thread up and not have that back spacing in there. And I'll show you what that looks like um, on your quilt. You have a little bit, um, let me put my quilt on. I have a couple of them because then I changed how I did it. Let's see here, go to my camera. All right, let's see if we can see. See right here, there's that little bit right there. That's the locking stitches. So if you remove those, what's going to happen is when you get there, you have to do your, remember I showed you in the uh, last two segments how to bring up your bobbin thread, and then you'll have the bobbin thread for the start so that you can just tie those off. So I, I would stitch two of them that are joined. Then when I got here, I would have to um, stop, you know, take the do the needle down needle up to bring up that bobbin thread i would tie those off and have to bury them unless i want to do this it just depends this is a kid's quilt so i wasn't so worried about it um but if i'm doing uh something a little uh maybe uh more specific or uh maybe it's for a competition or something like that i would definitely be not having this in my quilt i don't want to see that i would have nice smooth transitions in there and you can remove those stitches either in the software like i just showed you or if you when you stitch to the end if you're watching your stitching when it gets here you can um, move ahead stitch by stitch till you get to the last stitch before it starts going in the other direction write down that stitch number so you know where to stop your machine each time and just pull your thread up uh, and you're stitching right there, pull up your threads, and then you're going to move ahead to restart your second one, your second grouping. Let's take a look in the software and we'll look at a couple different designs. This design here is a block design. As you can see, it's very square. It would be great if you had a uh, quilt solid quilt blocks that you wanted, or even print ones that you wanna put a full design in that block, you can do that. You can also uh, multiply this across your quilt and down. And when I'm doing that, I do like to use my um, array tool for rectangular array to see just what it's going to look like. And don't worry about this, it'll go back to a line design in a moment. But what I'm looking at is the spacing between each block both across my quilt and down. If I have it this far, it's going to look like uh, block designs and maybe I do actually have blocks, but if I want it to look more seamless, more continuous, I would wanna put that closer together. And here I can take a look at what that closeness would be. And then when I use my template and I lay it out, I know I can bring it closer together. For me, it's a visual thing. I like to see it here first, so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like. I will not use this whole thing as a template. I'll print one of these as a template, and then it's up to me to apply it to my quilt. So when I look at this, I can see I, I probably need to make sure I bring them closer together this way, as I can see the, the, I can see the space between the rows. And what I mean is let's, let's do this. Let's select these ones here, and we'll move them a little closer this way and that little ridge will will go away. And so when I'm placing that, that's much better. This one will have to be fixed. As I'm placing these, I would place this one and stitch it. And then when I put this next one down, I wanna make sure I only leave a little bit of a gap here. And I could measure that gap at this point to see if that's what I want. This gap is, let's go in here. It is about, uh, Let's see, 0 0.13, 0 .8. yeah, so it's a tiny, it's not even a quarter inch, so I don't even wanna go a quarter inch. This is a big gap, you can see here, almost half an inch. So that's what you're looking at with block designs. When you want to multiply those across your quilt, it's the spacing between them if you want it to look more continuous, so you would leave less space. That's like working with the stipple designs from Junomi those want, make your quilt look like you've stippled the whole thing, but it's all about putting that second uh, one to the right and the one below it close enough so that they look like they are continuously stitched. But they do start and stop 
these start and stop up at this corner. Those stipple designs for Janome start in the center. So let's look at another design. If you had a design like our B design, I'll go back and look at that really quick. This is the one where it does start and stop, so it continuously goes across. And when you duplicate it, and we saw this in my when I was working with it, I can put it down here and it would nest together. This is nesting right here where it fits up into that spot. As you could see by these, they don't really have a nesting spot, okay? They're really more square the whole way around, so they don't nest. There are some blocks that are like this that do nest, so you'll, you will find those out in the marketplace. There's designs that come in like this, and this is part of a set. So this would be a starter row because it gives you a half of design, and then it has this piece over here, and they're continuous. They go completely across. But if I had just, uh, let's pretend that I had just a single one, and I'm going to duplicate this. See how it would fit right there? So if you just imagine this wasn't there, and I just did a row of this complete design all the way, I could offset these every other row. I would use a half row, then I would use the full as I went. Let's duplicate this one again up here. And it would go across my quilt that way. So just we'll just pretend these aren't here. So this grouping of designs, I don't have a single one of these, but this grouping of designs, you could uh, have every other row that you would work with. So you would work with these going across and they would link together. And then you would start this row, but then you would have to use these ones to go across, okay? So that's, that's what nesting is. And see how that looks when you get those together. They really look nice, like you've quilted a beautiful uh, continuous piece going across your quilt. Now let's look at this one. This one is a little different too. When it comes in, you'll be able to see this is a corner unit. So you may have done a, a border that comes down here. It's, there's another piece that goes with this and it would connect here. And then the next one going across this way would connect over here. So when you're looking at designs, um, these come from OESD. OESD has several different types of designs in there. Some nest, some don't. Here's a nesting design right here. I'm going to bring this one in. And I'm actually going to rotate this one this way so we can work. Let's put it back there. Let's rotate it around this way because I, let, I want to work left and right across my quilt. And I'm going to let go here so you can see. And we will go in close. It starts here and stops there. So if I wanted to put this across my quilt, I would stitch one. And then I would move my quilt and align this to come together right here. That would be my spot where I would bring them together. And maybe that's the spot where it is. Let's just click off of here and go out a little bit so you can see. So that would go across my quilt in that manner. Now, if I wanted to look at the second row of this. Let's put this over here so you can see nesting. If I copied this and brought it down here like that, you can see those are nesting together. How nice that is. So I could just use one section, one section and go across my quilt. I don't have to do any changing with that. It's going to nest together beautifully on my quilt. And if, of course, if I took this into my uh, array tool. Here we go. And I don't, I can't see very, let's see how these are. We'll see if they, we'll apply it and see what happens if I got them close enough together. I don't have them close enough together. So, but you can see if I select this row, I could move this row up in there. I could do the same down here, and then I could have an idea, even though they're not connected there, of what my quilt's going to look like. If you're a visual person and you need to see what it looks like, definitely use your array tool just to get a visual. I use it for a visual. I don't use it for the actual quilting. Here, I would just use this design here, and I would make my template, or I would just draw a line across my quilt, uh, 
this in this direction and maybe some going down just to keep everything level. And I would just stitch this one, move my quilt, align with the line, stitch the next one and go and across my quilt. This would be a very easy one to do. It doesn't have a lot going on with it, so it makes it a little bit easier. And you can see in here, these are some of the uh, designs that fit together. This is maybe that border design I was talking about. So some of these are parts of sets of designs that I have. Let's look at this one here. This one here, it does have a, um, it ends over here and it starts up here somewhere. So it does have a, a connector piece. So there might be a piece that goes with this that connects. Or if you copy this, let's see what this looks like. You might be able to turn this one. Sometimes when you play with these, they um, you can figure out different ways to use them going across your quilt. See, it has that little spot up there. So if I turn this, yeah, see, that's not, there must be a com completer piece that goes with that. This would really not uh, work. You'd have to work a, a little bit with uh, finagling this. See how it doesn't really, this would leave that little piece there. So you have to look at the pieces. This probably connects to something else. It might be the end of a row, start of a row. Um, and you'll just have to see what else is in the set with this piece. So make sure you're looking at that, where it starts, where it ends, what type of block it is. So you can do it across your quilt and don't forget I, you know you can use your um tools here this one here this is another one that um it starts here and ends over here so this would be a great one that goes across your quilt that you could use on there so make sure you're looking at that when you're picking your designs and use the tools within your software like your array fill tool so that you can see what it would look like going across and you know you could have some here this gives you that nice half block so you don't have to cut a block in half it probably gives you this full one somewhere i just didn't i just didn't download that i downloaded the half just to show you but if you had a design that didn't come with that of course you can use your knife tool and you could cut a block apart and use it that way or you can over stitch at the start some people will do that or find that spot Remember when I said when we were quilting along, you could find that number and make a note of it so that when you do every other row, you would have that number and be able to enter that into your quilt. I think that covers everything with using block designs and continuous designs, and that should help you finish up with your quilt. We'll go back to the camera and see what else we have to show you. Here we go. So we know how to join our designs now. That makes it easy. Um, and remove those stitches if we want to at the end. Both our junior members and our full members can do that. I would play around with that, make a little sample, do uh, make those changes, test it out, see how you like it, and if it's, the, if it's what you want to do. Uh, that way you know before you start on that big quilt and you don't have to pick it all out and find out, oh, I don't like that. Um, sometimes you'll find some designs have uh, double stitching on them. And there's ways to, you can remove that if you don't like how that's done. This is the uh, uh, thing about having software. It gives you those ability to make those changes. All right. So um, I will post in the comments the other two segments that we had. We had one in November and one in December. So you'll have those. And you'll find this video always on the page here on Genome Sewing Machine's uh, Facebook page. Plus, I move it over to the Artistic Digitizer page underneath the Easy Does It Quilting tab under Guides. So everything's over there as well. So I hope everybody has a great day. Get out there, get your quilts going. It's very easy doing quilting in the hoop. Um, there's lots of tips and hints I give along the way. F find what works best for you. And the only way to do that is to do it, to try it and figure out, oh, yep, this is, I like the way Ann said to do this. They're like, nope, I wanna do it a different way. Please do that because that's really, you know, get comfortable with your machine and what works for you. That's what I've done. And I hope you do the same thing too. So happy quilting, everybody. I look forward to seeing you again right here on the page. Have a great day. And thank you for joining me.